In this 10-year anniversary edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be revisiting the redesigned Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as the Top Loader. If you're interested in seeing my original unboxing video for this console, you can click the link to it in the description for this video. So Nintendo Entertainment System Control Deck. There really wasn't a new name or branding for this hardware revision of the original Nintendo Entertainment System like there was for the Famicom AV in Japan. And maybe that's because they didn't want to capitalize on the fact that this revision is actually kind of a step backwards uh, in regards to the audio and video output that it could provide. One of the main selling points of of the Japanese version was the AV. The original Famicom could only do RF output and they added or kind of replaced it with uh, composite video uh, and audio cables. This one could only do RF which is kind of strange because the original Nintendo Entertainment System from 1985, that could do both um, composite video and RF. So why there was that step backwards with the, uh, the US version, I'm not quite sure. But I heard that if you complain to Nintendo about it, uh, you could get a little bit of a different version. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, once we get this unboxed. But this one came out in 1993, which was about a year prior to uh, Nintendo's release of its final first-party game for the system, which I believe was Wario's Woods. So this would only be around for a bar about a year, whereas the uh, Japanese Famicom AV was around for about 10 years, as the, uh, the Famicom was officially uh, ceased in production uh, in 2003. So, U.S. Nintendo consoles don't have nearly the shelf life as the Japanese ones do. But we still do see some hardware revisions. So this one from 1993 is touting more a new design than anything else. And it's being marketed for the first time game player. That's something we saw when the Super NES first came out is um, they kind of relegated the NES for the younger gamer and then the new 16-bit console for that younger gamer's older brother or sister. Uh, and then we would see the same thing uh, from the Super NES to the N64. The new the advanced console was for the older gamer and then the older console was for the younger gamer. So that was kind of the position here. And from what I understand, Nintendo does extensive research about what their consumers use as far as TVs are concer uh, concerned. So I guess their research revealed that most consumers, or at least consumers in the younger age bracket, were still using CRT TVs with coax only. So. RF was appropriate for this particular redesign, but I think it was an unfortunate decision nonetheless. But regardless, the world's most popular home video game system, the original 8-bit technology, choose from a library of over 500 titles. So yeah, by this point, the Super NES had been out for about two years, and it was definitely uh, Nintendo's main system. So this particular console was supposed to be kind of a fallback for the younger gamer. Got similar branding and imagery on the long panel. On the first short panel here, we're seeing an ad for the cleaning kit, which is interesting. Even though that 10 NES lockout chip for piracy was not nearly as much of an issue with this console as it was with the original NES. They're still definitely recommending that you clean your games thoroughly. Keep your system in tip-top shape. The performance of your favorite NES games and accessories depends on the cleanliness of critical electronic contacts in your control deck and game packs. Regular use of the NES cleaning kit ensures long hours of non-stop excitement. Replacement tips for the game pack cleaner and an extra cleaning card for the control deck cleaner are stowed away neatly inside the body of the cleaner. Avoid the headaches of empty, scrambled, or flashing TV screens caused by dirty connectors with the NES cleaning kit. So yeah, definitely a flaw in the design, more so of the original NES than this one, but you did need to keep your NES games and consoles very clean. And I'm still finding that even with the uh, analog NT Mini Noir. It has to be super clean in order for the uh, connections to be readable. 
Then we also have an ad here for the NES Max controller, their turbo controller with that weird cycloid type of D-pad. Seize maximum control. The upper hand is yours with the NES Max. Achieve maximum accuracy with the 360 revolving cycloid button that gives you eight direction on-screen movement. Not analog yet at this point though, keep that in mind. The NES Max is equipped with turbo power for repeat firing action at the touch of a button. Extract the maximum in fun from your NES game packs with the NES Max. Each of these, of course, sold separately. Then on the second long panel, we've got a little bit of a different background here. We got that starry, uh, that star field background that we had been seeing since the original NES products released. And then on the second short side here, we've got a little bit of information about the newly designed controller. Cutting edge controller design. The newest controller design to emerge from Nintendo's development team allows true comfort and efficiency of gameplay for small or large hands. For two-player fun, the new shape combines a larger control pad with rounded corners to enhance game control. The controller's unique shape allows for a variety of grip styles. The 8-foot cord gives you new freedom. Experience the new possibilities of all your favorite NES hardware, accessories, and games with the NES controller of the future. So that is kind of a benefit that this US version has over the Japanese one is that the controller cords are a bit longer. Even though the Japanese version had detachable controllers for the first time, the cords were still very short. These were quite long. Arcade action in your home. Got the NES Advantage arcade stick. Play like the pros with the NES Advantage. This arcade style joystick comes with turbo adjusters for rapid fire excitement. When the action gets too hot, you can slow it down with the NES exclusive slow motion control. Yes, where your game will just pause and unpause repeatedly. Doesn't even work in all games. Play solo or take on a friend. The NES Advantage allows you to attain arcade accuracy. Each of these, of course, sold separately. So that leaves us with the back of the box here. Got some screenshots of popular games at the time. Unfortunately, Tetris and Yoshi's Cookie are covered up by a proof of purchase here. Combine the newest in video game hardware design with all your favorite games. Got the new controller. The newly re, uh, the redesigned NES controller is smaller and rounder, making it more versatile and suitable for a variety of grip techniques. Okay, the eight foot long cord allows maximum comfort and hours of exciting gameplay. Control pad and A and B buttons. You'll have a greater game control with this larger, more rounded control pad. Never noticed it was larger, but yeah, now that I think about it, I guess it was a little bit larger. I noticed the corners also weren't quite as sharp on the D-pad. A, B buttons are angled for ergonomic ease of operation, and I would argue that yeah, they are angled, but at the exact opposite angle that they should have been. In my unboxing video for the Famicom AV, I thought that if they were angled the other way, we would enjoy more of the action we had become accustomed to with the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. However, this isn't marketed for uh, post-Super Nintendo. This was marketed as a substitution for Super Nintendo. So, I do get that. I just think that was a, a an egregious design misstep there with this controller. Otherwise, it would have been perfect. State-of-the-art design. This newly engineered control deck looks fantastic, even right next to the Super NES system. Smaller size and efficient design allow this 8-bit powerhouse to complement the finest video game setup. Yeah, and it does look quite a bit like the uh, Su uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Got some boxy aesthetics going on, and even that hump kind of in the top middle there that we'll talk about uh, once we get it unboxed. Full NES compatibility. The look is new, but this deck offers the familiar functions of the old control deck and is compatible with all your favorite NES accessories and game packs. And that it is. And it does load up quite a bit better now that it doesn't have that zero resistance loading system. So here we've got Kirby's Adventure, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario Bros. 2, Dr. Mario, and Tetris 2. Some of the most popular first-party Nintendo games at the time of release of this NES top loader. So let's take a look and see what we got in the package. 
again we've got styrofoam going on here but unlike the super nintendo entertainment system there is no cardboard top piece to keep everything in so we've got a little baggy here with documentation first thing we have is a poster of some of the classics at the time and then the instructions for how to hook both of your systems up together. It's showing you how to hook up your new redesigned NES and then of course how to hook up the Super NES and the newly redesigned NES together at, uh, to the same TV at the same time by daisy chaining RF switches together. So they always wanted to make sure that you understood you could use both pieces of their hardware at the same time. So we got the classic series of games here prominently at the top of the poster punch out metroid legend of zelda and adventure of link were all reissued as the original classic series and then some of the newer popular games here at the time we got final fantasy star tropics and super mario brothers 2 dr mario yoshi and tetris as puzzle games and then World Cup, Super Spike V-Ball, and Play Action Football as sports games. So we got action, puzzle, and sports. The NES library was very well rounded. Got a consumer precautions booklet. Nothing too interesting here. Just lots of text about being careful. Got our Nintendo Power subscription here. Now that you have your new system, we'd like to deliver even more power for free. Fill out this form and send it in. That's all it takes to get your free issue of Nintendo Power. So we have got the little questionnaire to fill out there with all your personal information. Talking about the Super Power Club that Nintendo was promoting at the time. Really cool with the collector's cards and then the coupons for about five, four, or three dollars off different games. There were some cool things going on with the Super Power Club at the time. And then just more um, details here about signing up for Nintendo Power. All right, and then the last thing in that little baggie of documentation is your manual for the control deck. Instruction booklet. Got our seal of quality, as always. Diagram of included components here. Notice only an RF switch, no AV cables, unfortunately. What the connections on the back of your TV might look like. How to make those various RF connections to your TV. How to hook both your Super NES and your redesigned NES up to the same TV using daisy-chained RF switches. How to connect your controllers and insert game packs. And then the troubleshooting section with color to kind of show what might be going on on your screen, the various problems. Then of course we've got warranty information and the like, as well as parts order form. And a couple blank pages. Several, wow, I usually don't leave that many pages blank. But there we are. This is what we had in the box with the newly designed NES control deck. Let's start with that. Take it out of the, uh, the styrofoam here, out of its bag. And we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison with its Japanese counterpart, the Famicom AV. Very similar design. The branding, of course, is different. Family computer versus Nintendo Entertainment System. Lack of EXT port on the side, because that was never used in the United States. But also on the side, we can see the clear difference in design. The NES top loader is not flat like the Famicom AV is. And that's mainly because the cartridges are so much taller. They stick up very high out of the system. So they need just a little bit more of the chassis for the system, uh, for the cartridge to go down into, so it wouldn't wobble as much. 
and we would see a similar design in the US Super NES but that was uh, to make the system less flat because as I've mentioned before I think the Nintendo Service Center received lots of broken Nintendo Entertainment Systems because the top of the system was so flat North American kids would put their drinks on it sometimes and spill into the actual console and then of course it would need to be repaired so the Super NES the original one had a little bit of a, a, a raised portion like this to make less of a flat area for resting things on but I think this aesthetic here in the uh, the redesigned NES that was more to accommodate the bigger cartridge for comparison purposes, I have Rad Racer and Highway Star, which are just regional variations of the same game, inserted into their respective consoles. And right away, you can see how much higher Rad Racer sticks up out of the NES top loader versus Highway Star out of the Famicom AV. And uh, I think if they were to have redesigned the cartridges, of course, they wouldn't be this high. But keep in mind that these were originally designed for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. If we take a look at the cartridge between my thumb and my index finger, that's about the amount of space inside that is occupied by the uh, PCB board here, uh, leaving this whole upper portion empty. And uh, the reason we needed all this extra cartridge was so that we could insert it into the Nintendo Entertainment System with that zero resistance loading system <laughs> that ended up causing all the loading problems. So um, in order to make this NES top loader accommodate these oversized cartridges, they of course had this kind of bubble so that the cartridge could sit down in that much more console and keep it more stable. So that is one of the uh, biggest aesthetic changes that we've seen in the design here. The other one is a little bit more unfortunate for those of us using the NES top loader in the United States. So we take the games out here, we'll compare the backs of the systems. With the NES top loader, we've got our um, uh, AC adapter port and RF out for audio video. And then with the Famicom AV, we've got the AC adapter port and composite video and audio cables here. So there was quite a bit of a downgrade for the, uh, the top loader, as I've mentioned. But from what I understand, back in the day, if you complained to Nintendo about the video quality, and typically that would manifest itself in, I think, what is called like jail bars or something like that, on the screen there would be very faint vertical lines at regular intervals. If you noticed it, it became annoying. It wasn't the most obvious thing, but it definitely was a flaw. And the original NES, if you were using composite video, did not have that problem. So if you complained to Nintendo about the video quality, they would have you send in your top loader, and they would send you back a top loader that looked just like it. However, the back would look like the Famicom AV. So those models are floating around out there somewhere. However, I don't think they were ever an official retail release. This is what you got at retail. You only got the better version if you complain to Nintendo about it. So I have never seen those uh, in person, but I have seen pictures of them. So let's see what else we had in the package here with our NES top loader. Not too much, of course, because we've got the just an RF switch. No uh, AV cables here. However, this version of the RF switch uh, says SNES. So uh, they hadn't quite yet come out with the version that said Control Deck, uh, which was the more universal uh, RF switch for every other Nintendo system that was released. They would all work, but they were just branded here uh, with the different particular consoles that were available at the time. And then taking a look here at the controller that you got, here's the dog bone controller, same exact one that we would see with the Famicom AV. The only difference is what's on the back of it. I had already mentioned in my Famicom AV unboxing that Nintendo is making an effort to be more unified in its branding. So no mention of Nintendo Entertainment System or Famicom here, just plain old Nintendo. But on the back, we can see NES controller. So a little bit of a difference there. And then the only other thing that we have is our AC adapter for power.
So there you have the redesigned Nintendo Entertainment System, or Top Loader. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll stay tuned to World of Nintendo for lots of other content that I'm going to be having for you, especially the 10-year anniversary of Nintendo Unboxed. Videos just like this that I'm reshooting in an effort to improve the video quality. Got lots coming for you. The calendar's been up on the screen, so stay tuned for those, and until the next one, take care.